Hi, I'm Stuck, and uh, this is Bounty Thursdays. And today's sponsor is no other than amazing people over at Pentester Lab. Thank you for supporting the show. So there's been some discussion in the community regarding Burp 1.7 versus 2.0. And some things are better and some are simply not, depending on who you ask. And a lot of people are moving back to 1.7 for better and for worse. And if you feel like you want to give that a go and you don't want to downgrade all your extensions, but still keep on hacking using that good old 1.7 style, Europa has come to the rescue. Quote, I've been on 1737 for a while now, going back to 2 after each release to see if things has improved. That being said, downgrading extensions is bad. Luckily, there's a way to use Java 11, maybe even 12 on 1737. And this is how you do it. You just install it as usual, open the package, replace burp suite underscore product jar with the one from 1737 and delete the burp browser folder. Mm -hmm. It's hidden. And presto, you now have burp sev 1737 and Java 11 and no downgrades are needed. Presto is the new boom, by the way. I haven't tried this out yet, but I'm definitely going to give that a go and see if I can spot a real difference in my own workflow, because I have to agree. It's a bit sluggish, even on a MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes and an i9. And I don't think it should be that way, but that's just my opinion. And since we're talking about Burp, Bitwise recently dropped a video where he puts the crawler from 2.0 against the spider of 1.7 head to head and measures the results. It's called Profiling Burp Suite Spider Crawler Part 1, and the results are really interesting. I would suggest that you check out the video for yourself and form your own opinion. Man, great work Bitwise. Okay, so you're bug bounty curious, but you don't really know where to start. Well, then I got some great news for you. Sishano has opened up his own training camp over at bugbountyhunter.com. You can learn how to test for security vulnerabilities on web applications, learn all about bug bounties and yeah, how to get started. You can even browse and digest security research tutorials, guides, write-ups, and then instantly apply that knowledge on recreated bug bounty scenarios. There's a couple of free XXS and open redirect challenges, but the real fun begins once you become a member and get access to Sishano's methodology and can access his real-world labs. Man, this is just all good times. It's not festive enough. We need to sort that out. I mean, we are in December, so ah, uh, that's way better. So welcome to the festive season. There's a lot of different CTFs going on. Uh, we got KringleCon, we got Hacker One running there, uh, the Grinch Network's 12 Days of Christmas CTF, and um, Integrity just finalized their uh, latest December XXS challenge. All of these are up and running, so there's a lot of fun stuff to poke around. Hack Ones is still going on, and it's over at hackyholidays.h1ctf.com. And if you're a fan of um, Adam Langley's work, you know, this is definitely has a feel of that. It, it's awesome to see that hacker one are um once again just teaming up with creators from the community and if you feel like solving the the integrity challenge i'm betting you even though there's no uh monetized return of it i think you can still feel a little bit of nice reward on the inside for solving it so a while back i talked about the 403 bypass um, scripts that's been created by the community and now is another one sting 8k has created one that's a python plugin for burp all you need to do now is just browse the website and if you stumble upon a 403 it's going to automatically just punch in a bunch of payloads like the ones that i'm joker and low buhai uh put into their original scripts thank you community for upgrading the tools for me Nice, I definitely gotta give this a try. 
And since we're talking about giving away, Surush has lately on his Twitter been posting almost daily some tips and tricks that he's been picked up over the years as a penetration tester. Um, there is some good, really nice stuff in there. So if you aren't already subscribing to or following Surush on Twitter, I recommend you to do that because there's, there's some nuggets in there that you might just want to pick up on as soon as they get out. And if you're all nerdy like I am when it comes to putting payloads and stuff inside PDFs, you're gonna love the talk that Garrett Hayes did over at Black Hat EU. It's called Portable Data Exfiltration XXS for PDFs. Mm, just taste that for a second. Uh, it's a super good write-up. You definitely should check that out. And also, please do check the video where he deep dives you through the whole process. Super good stuff. And it just makes, oh, it made me, makes me just want to poke at PDF parsers all day. Uh, definitely check that talk out. A few weeks back, I had the opportunity to just do a hostile takeover on Hamsek's YouTube channel. It was during his live uh, Twitch stream. Normally on Sundays, he, he has this amazing show called Library Con, where he gets uh, hackers from the community in and he asks them about how they do their recon and they jab about stuff and it's all fun and games. But nobody really asked Hamsek about the questions that, you know, he needed to answer too. So when the opportunity arose that arised that I had the possibility to do a takeover on his stream and ask him the questions, I didn't hesitate for a second. So if you want to check out and know the secrets and the juicy stuff that Nahamsek's been keeping on his afterburner, you know, he's still one of those guys that made way too much money on hacking Apple. And have you seen the pile of Red Bull that he's been sitting on lately? There's a lot of good games in there, so definitely head over to Nomsek's YouTube channel and check out that interview and just get on the skin of Nomsek. Oh yeah, Peter Hunoki's project Bug Bounty Reconnaissance Framework, <laughs> I think I got that right, uh, has been updated to a new release and this is definitely something that I need to look into. I just haven't had the time. But in short, what it does is that you're able to output all the information from all your different uh, one-liner tools and such and store them inside a central database that you then can do requests from. So you don't need to store things in text files and such. So you can use the reconnaissance framework to just populate that with, say, uh, let's say that you're looking for all the domains on Yahoo and you do one flyover, you put them in that database and then you do another tool and you want to take that data from that database and you're going to have that. You can even do like DNS reversing and everything and have that stored inside the database. Let's say you want to find all the IP addresses for for yeah, Yahoo again. It, 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 it has a great potential. I just haven't had time to dig into it. And if you have played around with it, please leave a comment below explaining the perks or the things that you didn't like with it, because I'm very, very curious about what this kind of framework can do. Is it easy to implement? Is it easy to work with? I've seen some hunters use it and I'm curious. So I want to know more. And on that note, I think that's about all we have for today. So stay curious and I'll see you around. Take care.